it again, my friends. Berry Sunset Ranch Farm Vlog. This is the year I make the cut on the voice. You know it. The old girl's back in action, baby. So give her, give her Swan River. We're gonna talk about my Ford Power Stroke 6 liter diesel. What was wrong with it when it was blowing that hot side turbo boot off? Why was it over boosting and how we fixed it? While we're at it, we're gonna get the John Deere 6110, a fresh oil and filter change. I'm gonna explain to you what oil I'm using and why. And we're gonna change the fuel filter on it while we're at it. Top up the hydraulic oil on that bad girl too. Oh, and don't forget about Chevy and Dakota. The two exploring horses, they went for a little 2023 jaunt straight down the road to the neighbor's cattle operation and sort of harassing the uh, neighbors, you know, just normal stuff. So April and I are gonna go retrieve them, bring them back down the road, right? Hey, happy 2023. Enough chit chat, Aaron. Let's pit her, pat her, and get at her. Woo! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Bet you didn't think I could do that. <laughs> Well, it's oil change day for the John Deere's. We're gonna be going a little different though this year. Normally I would go Shell Rotella T6, eh? But I also like this Nemco. It's a local oil company and uh, you know, it's been, it's been good. I've used it before in my equipment with uh, great success, so. At the cr uh, price difference, I think the, the money I'll save using this full synthetic opposed to Shell T6 should be good. Uh, I would never use that in my Power Stroke. The Power Strokes are just too finicky, but for these uh, old John Deere motors, this stuff seems to make it run pretty nice and uh, quiet. Really easy starting in the winter. And then come uh, summer, we'll toss in some, uh, some 5 or 10W. But uh, for now, this should work pretty good. Let me know in the comment box below, what's your go-to oil when you're uh, talking heavy duty farm equipment or whatever heavy equipment you have uh, diesel oil changes in. Let me know, really curious to see what you say. Uh, I like, I do love, I love Shell Rotella T6. I used to use John Deere oil, but I just got priced out of that. You know, I, you know, I don't even know what it is now. Well, let's position our catch pail somewhere in vicinity. Wasn't very hard to break. <laughs> Holy, it's dirty. Trash washer, I usually change every time, but this one looks good. I just changed it. So I should be okay for another one. I'm putting a fleet guard. I do change these filters quite often. Bingo. Put that in there. Just gonna take off this side grill. Don't have to take them out. It just slides, holds it in place. Oh, my oil arrived, the trans hydraulic arrived for the 6400. Power trans fluid, low viscosity Phillips 66. I really like this Phillips 66, it's good stuff. Hi, sweetie. What are you doing out here? Oh, nice. Wow, here, let's go inside, sweetie. It's cold. Come on, babe. Come on, sweetie. Back to the oil change. <laughs> it's an LF3703 fleet guard, so I, I do have one of those. Perfect. Always make sure you get the gasket with it. Aaron, what are you doing? 
doing? Ah, it's both the same as zero W. <laughs> It'll be fine, folks. It'll be fine. Which it is. We're going to do a tight and we're going to give it another three quarter inch. This plug back. So we're going to add about 12 liters. There's eight, just about. Wait till the four mark. Beauty. Look at that beautiful nectar. And one more. So I did fill up the filter, so it's about 12.1, but it takes, I'm gonna put 12 in. 12 should take it right to the top. Twelve Rudy. All right, we'll let that drain in there for a minute. Beauty. On there. Just top on. And now, I want to do the seal filter while we're in here. Alright, topped up the uh, filter with diesel and we're going to pop her in. They have little grooves to hold them in place. So this one's over here. So I had to take a peek at that just to make sure. There. Don't over tighten it. There we go. Let's pull the dipstick. See what the oil's at. All right, let's start this beast up and cool off quite a bit out. Cycle these glow plugs a couple times. I'm going to warm up and we'll wrap her up make sure there's no drips. I just went through the revs a little bit, make sure there's nothing leaking anywhere. Drain 
plug looks good. Little filter, everything looks to be decent. It's good. Pull this oil stick, the oil dip stick. Let's see what's going on in there. That looks good. Right where it should be. Probably should have should have added so much. I do want to put uh, some hot shot or arc oil in the oil, but I'll do that uh, in the next few days. I have a couple of jugs of that arc oil. I love that stuff. I use it for everything now. I'm gonna show you what was wrong with my uh, um, what was wrong with my Ford Power Stroke six liter diesel. All right, this old girl. Let me show you. Oh, hood weighs a million pounds. Come on, hood. Hood, stay up. There. Hopefully it doesn't fall and crank me in the face. Anyways, the power stroke. Basically, what was happening here is I was hauling cattle. Luckily, I dropped the cattle off and I was getting a severe overboost. Now, my boost typically stays under 20 pounds PSI. This is just the dummy gauge, but it was going up to 30. It was obviously out uh, <coughs> over boosting. Uh, everything else was working fairly normal, but exception, with exception of that. Now, that's, that's a problem that blew off, but even bigger than that, these head gaskets are fragile as, as be. So I really don't want it over boosting. So it's a big potential problem. So I limped it uh, to the repair shop. Some of you probably saw the video and I uh, duct taped and I had a clamp, another clamp on me. And this is the part that blew off, lower part. This is the hot side. So it comes off the turbo through here and then into the hot side turbo boot. This is like a silicone boot. So this was my problem. Typically always is. Now I thought right away it was my uh, back, my exhaust back pressure sensor. So that back pressure sensor is found, you can see it in there, right behind there. So there's a sensor that screws into there and then that little pipe or tube feeds to the uh, exhaust where it senses the, the pressure. So I thought my sensor was bad, but I have a sensor. The sensor in there is only about uh, two months old, three months old, maybe something like that. So right away I thought my I'm gonna have warranty on the, the sensor at least. It's not a huge job. But what happened is I took it in for an oil change to my mechanic. I told him to look it over because I needed 100% for hauling. And uh, he didn't find anything wrong. He pulled the sensor off, tested it, everything was fine. He said it looked great. But in that tube, in that tube from that cold weather we had, it was sitting, I guess it got some moisture buildup. We had a lot of fluffy drifts, lots of fluffy snow I was hitting through. And somehow it got moisture in that tube. So the tube that the EBP, the exhaust, exhaust back pressure sensor screws into. Now it was getting false readings, it was over boosting, bottom line. So he pulled the tube off right from the side, took the sensor off, cleaned the sensor, tested it, sensor checked out good. He then cleaned out the tube really well uh, with, I, I guess, imagine he used some kind of plastic cord cleaning, um, spray, etc. cetera, uh, sensor clean, whatever it may be. Cleaned it out good, threw it in, uh, put on some miles, tested it. Everything's perfect. I'm getting great fuel mileage, just boosting perfect again, 100%. So while well, I was at it, obviously I did a full uh, Shell Rotella T6 oil change with Arc Oil uh, Friction Modifier. Prairie Sunset Ranch has an Amazon store. You can go and check out my favorite things, what things that I use on the farm, try test and true. You can go thumb through the storefront. I'll just leave it in the description below. You can click on it, take you straight there. But yeah, that's what happened. The Arc Oil along with the T6 makes this thing start pretty damn good in the winter. So anyways, that's the update on the old Power Stroke 6 liter. Uh, the old girl's back in action. Well, I just got in the house from feeding the cattle and hauling some bales. So what happened is I leave the gates open so I can go stack the bales in the back hay storage area. But in turn, I have to lock the horses up in their little corral area by our yard. So I had them locked up. I was done with the calves. So I opened up their gates 
And before I did one final check of the calf, uh, the calf lot, I look, there go the horses. They're running down the road straight to my neighbor. So April's already there. I'm gonna go see if she needs help. But <clears throat> the horses aren't wild, they're tame. They're just shitheads. They always do it. Chevy Dakota are notorious. They will spot a fence or a gate open and they will look until your back is turned because they were right around me. They didn't give a crap about it and then they just beeline it. So, oh well, hopefully April gets them. She's got uh, other, I think she's got a halter or something. She's got something with her. It is gorgeous out right now. It's probably only minus five. It's so nice. Frost came out of everything. So it's finally warmed up. Oh, <laughs> if you can see in the distance, there's April. Oh, I guess our neighbor is helping her because the other one's going into their yard now. <laughs> Bunch of brats. I'm telling you, I love horses. I love these guys. They're, they're awesome. I love having them around. And they always want pets and they're... I love having them around. I love seeing them, but days like this, luckily it's nice out. You know what? I've had them last winter in six feet of snow out gallivanting and that's a nightmare and then secondly you don't want to chase them because you don't want to chase a horse you don't want to chase any animal she's just walking them back she doesn't even have a halter and she doesn't even have a rope on on a chevy it doesn't look like so we'll just go behind and make sure she gets them back they definitely eat their worth on this farm they eat the best of the best if you think the sheep eat uh, good hay these guys eat well they don't eat much alfalfa but they eat all the fine grasses, uh, brome, timothy, hay, they eat all that. So we gotta watch uh, th their weight actually. They're getting a little overweight there. We had to cut them down and give them a little bit of a poor bale. They weren't too happy with me there last time, but we got a good one now. Oh, she's got the old bucket of goodies. She's got some horse treats in there. That's why they're following her so nicely. Here I was telling everyone, oh look, they just, well, Dakota Shep following you pretty good. Hey, jerk one, jerk two. You're lucky you're very loved on the farm because you guys are naughty. We're just gonna put them in right in the yard gate and I guess they're gonna go check out the gate that I just closed that they ran through. <laughs> oh, April said I gotta pick up the pace because <laughs> I gotta open the gate. So here's do some power walking. Did you bring me a beer at least? Are you joking? <laughs> Are you joking? No, I'm actually not. I did. They were, they saw it open, they didn't care. And then I went into the calf lot and they took off. I'll tell you a trick. They're being jerks. I know that I, I got a, I saw them playing. They ran to the water bowl and back and I, I should have known better with the weather this nice. I should have known they were going to head that way. Hey buddy, come on. I am. Dakota's like chasing me. They see me every day. It's a part of my 2023 program, getting back into shape. You should all have an April at home. You'd be in shape too. <laughs> ha ha. Why? All right. All right. Here we go. There we go, guys. Kick it in there, dude. Nice. April, I'd like you to tell the crowd why your horses are so rotten. They're not. You're rotten. Well, we'll, we'll see what they have to say in court. <sighs> okay. Taking those horses to court. They broke out of the gates one too many times. No, they didn't even break out of the gates. That's you leaving the gates open. They walked out of the open gate. Blah, 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 blah. Always defending the horses. Damn hay burners. I like them. Can you please put this in the shop? What? My hands are cold. I have no mitts. I have no mitts. You, ha you have a mitt on that hand. Liar. <laughs> a figure skate mitt. This doesn't do anything. Whatever, it's still better than nothing. <laughs> Well, thanks for dropping by. This is Aaron signing off. We will catch you next weekend with an all new Purse SRS Farm Vlog. Be there or be square, my friends. Have yourself a fantastic week. 